We are live on your DSTV, Channel 421, Go TV 144. This is John News Prime. Our headlines this hour. The hotspots for HIV are related to the mining communities, the activities and gender, the spread of the virus. Those segments of society or the economy whose activities and gender transmission of HIV is, have been left off the hook, the hotspots of HIV is, is related to the mining communities. We'll hear more from the chairperson of the governing board of the commission, Dr. Kwekwe Frie. Also here on Join News Prime, importers and exporters hint consumers must brace themselves for the high cost of goods and services. Details as Guta complains the city depreciation is taking a toll on their capital. If an importer will have to hustle through uh, to go and bring goods under this high cost rate of the dollar to Ghana city of 7.4 as speak, uh, it tells you that um, goods and services prices will have to go up high and that will not be well for the Ghanaian consuming public. Also coming up, the Supreme Court has ordered that Senate North MP James Judge Equation to file his defense in a case seeking to stop him from performing parliamentary duties. At 8 p.m., I'll hand over to Charles, well, to Daryl and Gary for Prime Business and Prime Sports. Daryl, what should we expect? Well, it's not just the consumers feeling the pinch of LPG price hikes. The marketers are too. You definitely don't want to miss that. We are your home of independent, fearless and credible journalism. I am Ernest Minu. Stay for details. Thanks for joining us here on Join News Prime. Now, Chairperson of the newly constituted Governing Board of the ACE Commission, Dr. Kwekwefriye, says activities of mining companies is endangering HIV AIDS and working against Ghana's quest to eliminate the disease by 2030. After decades of campaign and sensitization, it is estimated that 21,000 people die annually from the virus in Ghana, depriving the country of the much-needed productive segment of its population. Though the country has made progress in meeting the SDG target of ending the virus by 2030, Dr. Kwekwe who doubles as the Minister for Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation, says the virus has persisted because of the indiscriminate activities of miners operating within the communities. At 20 is it uh, 21,000 people die every annually? Imagine about 400 STC or VIP buses plunging into a ravine or a river, the Volta Lake, so to speak, and dying per annum. That's how many people. And they are some of the most productive segments of our society. That is why we must invest in that area and not relent. After acquiring all this knowledge, if we allow that kind of those people to have early deaths, even from the economic models, we will not have done good to our society. Mr. Vice President, there are a lot to say, but suffice to say that I will be coming to you as chairperson so that we remind government that you give her the funding. But it doesn't mean that you come for central government. It is not lost on me that those segments of society or the economy whose activities and gender transmission of HIV is have been left off the hook. I'm being specific. Those in the mining industry, because the red hot zones, the hotspots of HIV is, is related to the mining communities. Unless maybe in the last few years where I haven't said the epidemiology has changed. So they must have, we must take money from them to invest. Apart from the pneumoconiosis and the dust and whatnot that they throw with cause other diseases, HIV AIDS is a social problem and among other things like alcoholism and all, uh, you know, chronic poisoning and all that, their activities and then the HIV AIDS. So we must take money from them. 
Let's get some more details from the chairperson of the newly constituted governing board of the AIDS Commission, Dr. Kwekwefuye, who joins us on the phone. Thank you so much, sir, for your time here on Join News Prime. Now, first of all, we've had your concerns. We'll get into that shortly. But would you say that the measures put in place will ultimately bring us to the place of achieving uh, the targets, that is the 3.3 target of the SDG uh, that seeks to end the epidemic by the year 2030? I'm very, very hopeful. Uh, thank you and good evening to you all. But I'm very, very hopeful that it will, we can. Within, when you take the history of epidemics, uh, this target that has been set mm. is not uh, something which cannot be achieved. It okay. can. But we, of course, we have to work at it. Mm. And you, you profile HIV is because it's tied in with human sexual activity. It's a very, very difficult proposition. Mm -hmm. But if we work at it, I'm very, very sure that we can, you know, achieve our target. Mm. But despite your optimism, there appears to be some development that could obstruct the success. And you are specific in your observation, that is the activities of mining communities. Now, how does uh, this new board intend to deal with this, you know, social problem? Yes, uh, of course. Uh, most, you know, the issue of HIV is much as it's a medical problem. It's mostly a social and cultural problem. So right now that it, we are dealing essentially with a chronic or, if you like, an endemic disease, we have to take the social dynamics and the cultural dynamics very, very, very serious. Mm -hmm. And that is why the mining communities are very, very important, because the way the humans behave it, behave in that setting, we have to make sure that we get them to understand that they have to attenuate their lifestyles and anything that will let, lead them into that kind of situation, we, 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 we have a handle on them so that the, you know, the prevalence is reduced towards zero that we envisage. And we've been digging up some data on, uh, you know, HIV AIDS and its prevalence uh, from the uh, commission that you're chairperson of. We'll be putting that up shortly. But you talk about the activities. Uh, can you give us some more detail about these activities you talk about in these mining areas that are exactly contributing uh, or derailing the efforts that you are making at achieving the SDG target? You, you, you know that the activities as social, the sexual workers, the, 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 that is where the whole sports of sexual, uh, you know, workers' activities. I'm talking about commercial sexual workers. Okay. And so we have to make sure that we provide them with all the tools that they have. They have to use condoms. We have to educate them. They have to refrain from unprotected sex. And then their clients too have to be, uh, you know, uh, 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 of course, with regard to the, even the commercial sexual workers, they have periodic screening and how to take care of themselves. And they are, they are consuls or they are clients to likewise. And we also have to advise them how to protect themselves. And so those activities will likely lead to the desired outcomes or the outcomes that we desire. Mm. So, so largely unprotected or indiscriminate sexual activities. Doc, I would want you to hold the line for me. Uh, let's look at the data we pulled out from the uh, commission and then we'll come to you uh, and talk more about the solution, which is getting the miners themselves involved in addressing this. And so we picked this from the uh, Ghana uh, HIV fact sheets 2022 com from the AIDS Commission. And it is estimated that a number of people living with HIV as of the year 2020 stands at 346,120. Now, we look at the next slide, which will give us some more details. So we'll do a comparison. We're looking at 2019 and 2020. So you see a marginal increase there. In 2019, 342,307, uh, as against the current figure or the 2020 figure of 346,120. So you see uh, some difference of over 4,200 uh, from this uh, statistics. Now we look at the gender mix, and Doc, I'm sure you are very interested in this. Now when yeah. you look at the gender mix, uh, females uh, constitute 66% of the 2020 figure we brought to you. 66% of people living with HIV are females, and we have 34% being male. 
And so that is the gender mix from uh, the data we are getting from the uh, you know, Ghana AIDS Commission. Let's look at the next uh, slide, which gives us a breakdown of the total number of AIDS-related deaths. And so we are seeing that as of the year 2019, 13,619 people died from HIV or HIV-related deaths, uh, which is the more appropriate way to put it. And in 2020, 12,756. Now, it's important to note that whilst you're seeing an increase in the prevalence, as we saw in the previous slide, there's a decrease when it comes to the number of people who are dying as a result of uh, HIV or related uh, you know, activities. And this is attributed largely to the use of antiretroviral drugs and the fact that more people are being screened and checking for HIV and generally seeking medical attention. Uh, when you read the data, it will give you, uh, you know, those details as well. Now, here's the regional breakdown, which is also very interesting and that will corroborate to some extent the points that the chairperson has been making. The Ashanti region is leading uh, with 73,245 cases. Let, next uh, is the Greater Accra uh, region with 70,000. That's quite close, uh, 855. We come down to the eastern region, then to the western region. The central region follows. The Volta region, the Bono Hafo, Bono East, uh, Western North, the Alpha region, the Upper East, North, Northern region, Oti region, Upper West, uh, Savannah, and the Northeast region uh, with the least uh, number of cases when it comes to HIV per this 2020 data. Now, the next slide, we'll look at the district, and this is the top 10 districts. We selected them for you just to put this in perspective, and you'd see that uh, uh, Dr. Fouye has a point there. Um, so, Lower Manyakrobo is leading uh, with 6%. Now, low, Lower Manyakrobo is not a mining community, but if you look at the data uh, from the Ghana AIDS Commission, it's been leading for some time now. That is uh, quite a peculiar situation there. We'll be find out why uh, that is happening. But, and same for Upper Manyakrobo as well. But Tano South, Esiojaman, Yellow Krobo is also not. Tema is an urban area here in the Greater Accra region. But New Joab in South is a mining area. Then you have Obuasi, you have Obuasi East, and then Etiwa East. And so out of the top 10, you can point about four uh, that, you know, are mining communities that actually uh, do have, you know, you know uh, leading cases of uh, HIV AIDS in the country. So that is certainly uh, a cause for, uh, for worry and corroborates the point that Dr. Fouye is making. But Doc, uh, you make the point about roping in the miners or the uh, mining community in, in trying to address this. Uh, how confident are you that they are willing? What sense do you get from them about their willingness and readiness to contribute to this campaign? Uh, before I come to that, we were enlisting some districts. Yes, sir. But let me also point out to you that because of migration, Mm -hmm. And if you know the sociology and the history of uh, the, the way uh, HIV is evolved, uh, in Ghana, people who have traveled to do commercial sex activity in La Côte d'Ivoire, Nigeria, for example, and where they came from, sometimes when they get an illness, then they retire to their communities. So there are several determinants. So when I, we said the mining communities, when you do the, the segregation, it mm. may even turn out that some of the districts where there are no mining, act, uh, mining activities, mm. apparently, those who have the disease, and when they have the over disease, naturally, they, they go back to their hometowns for psychosocial support. Okay, okay. Uh, that is why some uh, districts, there are no mines there, but, you, you know, they have a uh, high prevalence rate. Mm. But to talk about the mining communities, yes, we, we are engaging them. I know the East Commission has been engaging them and doing a lot of work there. But we have to, you know, uh, up our activities there and then also treat them, the models that we've been using to treat the, the wider Ghanaian community, we have to be very aggressive in those areas. And then also uh, go into details and uh, you know, factor in several determinants about this. Thing. You know, this, this drug culture too is in these same mining areas. You know, cocaine, weed, and so and so forth. 
So when you, they are all tied in, it's a very neat, neat uh, thing. And uh, there are so many confounding factors. But when you break them down, and that is when you have a hand up. I'm sure that the East Commission, as considered now, has the, the, the tools and the men to do that job. So we will have to zone in. Mm. But let me also add that, in the, uh, you know, for every epidemic, the last cases are the most difficult to, you know, to eradicate. If you take the issue of uh, smallpox, polio, measles, whooping cough, we've always been like that. And uh, HIV is, to the extent that it's become a chronic entity, it's also behaving true to type. But I suspect it could even be a lot more difficult to eradicate because it is tied in or associated with, uh, you know, the very, very sensitive and, if you like, desirable human activities, and that is sex. And that is why it, that might even make it even more difficult to, to do. But, of course, we, like I said, uh, society has evolved and we also have evolved, and we know we have the tools and the uh, where we are uh, even to deal with it. Very well. So I am not uh, daunted at all, and I suspect that we can uh, achieve our target. Mm. Uh, thank you very much, Doc. We'll leave it here, and uh, later have a broader conversation on, on this uh, goal that you set for yourself as chairman of the AIDS Commission. Thank you very much uh, for speaking to us. Now, let's engage the General Secretary of the Mine Workers Union, Abdul Mumun uh, Bana, uh, on the phone. Thank you very much, sir, for your time here on Join News Prime. Let me first take your reaction to the concern raised by Dr. Efriye about the activities in the mining communities that is engendering or, you know, uh, actually thwarting government efforts in dealing with HIV AIDS. Well, well thank you very much and uh, good evening to uh, your listeners. Uh, I, I think that uh, some of the pronouncements, particularly from Dr. Afriye, uh, to put it very mildly, I, I think that is quite erroneous. First and foremost, uh, HIV AIDS is a public health issue, and everybody is concerned about it. It is part of the reason why the UN, as part of its SDG, have thrown the searchlight on HIV AIDS. But we need to be very cautious the way and manner we go about the narrative, particularly when it comes to um, the conversation around HIV AIDS. The last time I checked, matters around HIV AIDS are supposed to be confidential, particularly because of the stigmatization that comes with it. And so for you to throw the searchlight on mining communities and the fact that mining communities are leading the way when it comes to the spread of HIV, I think that is rather worrying. Yeah, Mr. Banner, I, I'm not sure how the issue of confidentiality comes in when you have already admitted that this is a public health issue that must be targeted. No, it's a public health issue, but what I'm saying is that we, we need to be cautious with our pronouncement because at the end of the day, it is confidential. And if you talk, for example, mining communities and anybody in and around mining communities are uh, susceptible or prone to HIV AIDS, you know how... Uh, people generally would, would view, you know, my, these mining communities. What I'm saying is that we need to put in interventions where we ought to, but to the extent that we begin to tag, it's something that we need to watch carefully. Well, well he, he simply raised a concern because he's worked in this industry for a while. Now that he has the opportunity uh, to be on the board of the AIDS Commission, he thinks that it's important to raise, having observed over the years, uh, you know, the activities in the area, and most importantly, would want you to contribute towards this campaign. Your reaction? Well, it is fair if these are observations have been made over a period of time. And I don't think that um, as citizens of this country, uh, things that are progressive, and for that matter, things that are inimical to uh, I mean, I mean, the, the public, and more particularly, I mean, uh, the health status of people, should be something that, as citizens of this country, we should ignore. Certainly, you want to be interested in how we can generally promote the well-being of the Ghanaian citizenry. And, and by so contribution, 
And by contribution, he also means monetary. Well, Are you willing to, of, to, to pay? Yeah, the issue of monetary, I mean, I have read bits and pieces of what, what they intend to do, to raise, you know, some amount of money from CSR budgets of mining companies, you know, particularly within the, these mining community. CSR, I mean, we can get into that conversation and see to what extent we can all, you know, support uh, mm -hmm. this cause. But let me put on record that most of these mining communities, that are, uh, sorry, most, most of these mining companies that operate within the mining community have in themselves put in a lot of intervention, not just for their, their, their workers, but also for the communities in and around them. I am very, I'm very much aware that there are interventions in place, particularly targeting prevention, mm -hmm. where, I mean, as part of well-being and well, welfare of employees, within these mining companies and also within the mining community. Mm. I mean, there are periodic re uh, 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 I mean, screening to ensure that people are well taken care of, where they have to be put on antiretroviral drugs. Those interventions are all in place. So mm. I, don't, I do not know to what extent uh, levies will be imposed on mining communities as a way of contributing to uh, the prevention. Uh, and, and, and in some cases, how we can help to alleviate uh, the, the current predicament that uh, citizens of this country may be going to as a result of uh, HIV. But it's a conversation that will require consultations amongst stakeholders. And I don't think that mining companies, given their track record when it comes to contribution to CSR, uh, would want to turn a blind eye on. It's a conversation that can be looked at. But to the extent that it becomes an imposition, I do not think that is the way to go. We need yeah. to have a consultation and see how together we can uh, look at how to raise, you know, the needed funding to support the Ghana Commission. Very well. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bana. That's uh, Abdul Mumin Bana, the General Secretary of the Mine Workers Union. Uh, Charles Kobna Ansa is an assemblyman at Hotopo Electoral Area, a mining community in the Western region, and he joins me uh, on the phone. It's important to speak to him because uh, it's a mining area, and we also know that uh, the issues of HIV AIDS are quite prevalent there. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Assemblyman, for joining us. Now, how are miners in your area reacting to uh, you know, this plan to get you to contribute towards reaching that SDG target of eliminating HIV AIDS by 2030? Uh, thank you very much. Let me take this opportunity and greet your cherry Z West and to my good people in Ahanta West, Otopo to be specific. Uh, yeah, indeed. Uh, you know, areas where the uh, population of Galamise, you know, some of the challenges that you contribute to, uh, to, to the community as well as age developmental issues are concerned. Now, I am at Otopo. I feel like it was just last year, 2021, that we experienced this Galamise operation in my community. And as I'm speaking now, uh, in other hands, it has negatively affected the community. Because, you see, they normally well with uh, our young girls with their money. And uh, normally with having sexual intercourse with the young girls, usually as, uh, resorted to teenage pregnancy. And uh, issue about HIV and then predominantly uh, get in touch with uh, this act. So, uh, Galamite has really affected the community, as I'm speaking. And, and what we want to know is whether the miners, you get a sense, they are willing to pay to contribute towards this campaign of uh, eliminating HIV by 2030. Yeah, I think it all boils down to uh, education. If uh, we are able to, I mean, stay down with them, depending about what it, it is, it, I mean, it is going on, I think we are all ready to contribute that we can all come together to eradicate uh, this uh, uh, STD that we are all talking about. Thank you very much. Uh, that's Charles Kobunansa. He's an assembly man in the Hotopo electoral area. You're watching Join News Prime with me, Ernest Mino.
Thanks for staying with us here on Joy News Prime. Now, the Ghana Importers and Exporters Association say consumers should brace themselves to pay more for the goods and services due to the consistent depreciation of the Ghana city. The city is currently trading beyond seven cities for a dollar, with experts warning it could hit eight cities uh, to a dollar by the second quarter at its current rate of fall. Speaking to Joy News, Executive Secretary of the Ghana Importers and Exporters Association, Samson Awingobit, explained that businesses would have to pass on the additional cost to consumers. Uh, business community are worried and, and the consumers should be worried about it because uh, at the end of the day if, if an importer will have to hustle through uh, to go and bring goods under this high cost rate of the dollar to Ghana city of 7.4 as you speak uh, it tells you that um, goods and services prices will have to go up high and that will not be well for the Ghanaian consuming public looking at the economic situation of the ordinary Ghanaian. I strongly believe that our call, that, that majority of our import is coming from Chinese, China market. And so there's no need for any Ghanaian business person to say, I'm traveling to China to buy goods. And you put your, your, your fiscal cash at your commercial bank, Asian dollar. We should, we should instead of uh, the Bank of Ghana or the government making Nian, Chinese Nian available. So, so far as you feel your form, indicate that this supply is good to China. There's no need running for dollar before you take, get it to China and you have to change to Chinese yen. I strongly believe that that is the way to go to. So to make Chinese yen available in the market. You know, the Ghana Union of Traders, that's Guta, says that depreciation of the city is taking a toll on their capital, which has been depleted by about 16%. We'll speak shortly to the Executive Secretary of the Association, Samson Asakia Wungobit. Uh, but first, my colleague, Kweko Asante, joins me via Zoom with a copy of the Guta statement explaining the applied Kweku. Uh, how exactly do the members say about 16% of their capital has been lost? So, Ernest, um, according to the Ghana Union of Traders Association, from December 2021 to date, their capital has been depleted by 16%, and they go on to explain that when the rate of the dollar was 6.4%, a trader could use 640,000 Ghana cities to buy $100,000 worth of goods. But as of the current rate, which is about 7.6 cities to the dollar, the same 640,000 Ghana cities can only buy $84,000 worth of goods. And so they are making a loss of about $16,000 which computes to about 16% in terms of depletion of their capital. And so they are calling on government to, as a matter of agency, take steps that can fix the free fall of the city. They go on to say that about $100,000 that was needed to buy some of the products, traders will have to go and find around 120,000 cities to now supplement their capital to be able to do business. And they are claiming that a lot of businesses are falling by the way and they want government to fix this ASAP. Okay, good. Thank you very much for bringing us details of that good statement in which they talk about their capital depleting. So how can government address this situation? Let's go on to the phone lines now and speak to the, uh, the, the chairman or the president of the Importers and Exporters Association, Samson Asaki Awengobit. Uh, he joins us on the phone. Um, well, we seem to have lost him on the line, uh, but essentially uh, they're saying that they would have to pass on the extra cost to consumers because this would definitely affect their business, and that's the only way they can keep themselves in business. Uh, Samson Asaki Awingobit will join us shortly. Earlier you heard from him uh, talking about the impact of the depreciation of the Ghana city. But let's get some more detail from him. He is with us. Uh, on the line. Uh, thank you very much, Samson uh, Awingobit, for joining us here on Joy News Prime. So uh, tell us uh, how this is affecting you and what you think can be done to help your business. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Mr. Awingobit. Good. So uh, if you can ask the question again, please. Yeah, so you say that the depreciation of the city is affecting your business and you'd have to pass on the extra cost of doing business to the consumer. Uh, we're asking you to give, you, to give us some more detail about uh, exactly how the depreciation is affecting your business and what you think can be done for you to keep you in business and also to cushion the consumer. Well, it's a dire situation at the moment that uh, currently as we speak, the Ghanaian city is 
get kept on the proceeding. And as we speak, city is going one dollar is going for seven point four Ghana City, whooping amount, just using one dollar. Um for the business community, I mean those who have bought goods uh in their in their warehouses, they in their cool stores, they will have to reprice reprice it. Other than that, uh many of them beginning of this year I never thought that the city the dollar will hit seven cities let alone seven points plus. And so, strategically, all prices uh, would make losses uh, if one does not adjust. As we speak, if you cannot adjust between 7.6, 7.7, 7 and, and, and of course, 18, then by the time one will finish selling by the end of this March, March, and then, then probably we don't know where. The future is where dollar will be rising to. Mm. And so if what is happening now, kind of, is that if you compare today's date and the period of today's first quarter, and you compare with 2021 first quarter by this time, the rate to one dollar was around four point something. At that time, if one was using a hundred thousand Ghana cities to go and buy goods from Europe or whatever, and you wanted to change into forex currency for that matter, the dollar, you were getting almost about fifty thousand dollars to from one hundred thousand Ghana cities. As you speak, with seven point four, you cannot tell me that you will still get half that changing from hundred thousand Ghana cities, and you will realize or you will get get uh, fifty thousand years to go and bring container. Mm -hmm. Now, what it means is that if that same importer, I can no longer bring. If you use fifty thousand dollars to go and bring three containers and pay duty on these three containers. Now one is end up bringing gas one and a half container. So Very one, well. the importer has the challenges too. Mm -hmm. The government is go also going to lose revenue because if one can no longer bring three containers, it tells you that by the end of the year, if, if GRA would make uh, uh, <clears throat> their financial analysis, you will realize that they will not meet the target that they set for themselves. Definitely. But, but do you have suggestions on the way forward? Because this is a sector that you work in. You've been there for some time now, and you've, you've seen uh, similar incidents in time past where we had difficulty with the city. Uh, do you have any suggestions on how you can be helped? Well, we have been telling government that there's a need for government to put a seal on this dollarization issue. Okay. If we are, as we speak now, if we are trading at 7.4, Let's make sure that 7.4 for the next one month or for the next two months or for the next three months. Okay. They will know the government will be able to do something about it. The yeah. business people can plan. Mm -hmm. Or government should also survey, not get survey. The statistics is available showing that many Ghanaians go to China to do trade. If that's the case, why should one go into China to convert Ghana cities into dollars, get to China, and China will convert it to yen? Why can't government make the Chinese yen available in the computer bank? So that if you come to do the transfer and you are filling the form, you will indicate where your supplier is. Is in China, is in UK, or is in US. To US, they need US dollar. If in Germany, they do whatever. If in China, you need Chinese yuan. Chinese yuan is available in the computer bank. Straight away, you transfer to, your, to, 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 to pay your supplier. Mm. So for us, we struggle with the government in terms no. Unless someone is benefiting somewhere, that the city should be, continue to depreciate, then they will get profit somewhere. Other than that, I struggle with what is happening. It's going to help government, it's going to help consumers because the people who have their cargo in the market, if they are pricing it during the first quarter from January and we are anticipating that by the end of Jan uh, March, the city, the dollar will not hit seven cities to our, city, our, our Ghana cities. One dollar will not hit seven cities. Good. So you price your goods around seven mm. or 7.1 or 7.2. As we speak, one dollar is not going for 7.4. So where do you go? Mm. So two very important suggestions there. Mr. Wingobit, I want to thank you for your time here on Join News Prime. That's the uh, sec Executive Secretary of the Importers and Exporters Association of uh, Ghana. You're watching Join News Prime with me, Ernest Mino. We have some more stories for you. So how can government arrest the city and minimize the impact on consumers? Let's talk to a member of the Committee on Finance in Parliament, Dr. Stephen Amwa. Uh, he's also MP for Insure. So Dr. Amwa, thank you for your time on Join News Prime. Uh, so we had that from Samson Asakia Wingobit, who talks about the pricing of the city and also uh, government pumping some more uh, Chinese yen into the economy uh, to help stabilize their businesses. Uh, what do you make of this suggestion?
Um, thank you very much. Um, I think um, what they are saying makes sense. But boss, I beg you respectfully, for how long are we going to do this cyclical approach to solving currency issues in Ghana? And people are not allowed to actually come up with what will help us as a country to once and for all deal with this situation. The problem is all governments, including present government in the past, have been adopting short-term approach. They don't approach it. They don't work anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world. So if we're talking about solutions, first thing that we should think about is a long-term approach. That one, let's put it aside. Secondly, we should also understand the top currencies that are globally tradable. I mean, on the global market. Yeah. Even that one, the Chinese yen is not part. I'm not saying it's not important. Surprisingly, you can talk of the US dollar, you talk about the euro, you talk about Japanese yen, you talk about the pound, you talk about Swiss franc, you talk about Canadian uh, dollar, Australian, even South African currency. So there are, we call something common currency zones or common zone currencies that are mostly tradable on the globe. So even the Chinese themselves, they are more, they are more into the tradable currencies than even the yen. So what they are saying is not, it's not a problem. I think what the government has to try and do in the short term, apart from sometimes they push in some dollars and maybe syndicated loans to mitigate the situation, whether this or MPP, is first to think of how government can hedge most of the world tradable commodities, especially okay. the, the, the petroleum products. Things that we need inevitably on the globe, whose prices will affect our currency, will push us to demand for more to go and buy them. But, but hedging, to... hedging, for instance, when it comes to fuel, would require that we raise some huge capital. Uh, do we have you know, that much in, in, we, no, in okay. the economy, let, in let, terms let of the liquidity, let, to, to deal with let, it? Let me, let me tell you, hedging, it depends. If you use option, option, I understand what you're saying, but if you use option, you pay premium. And the premium is said that when the oil prices go, even uh, rises up into the sky, like, I mean, outrageously, and mm -hmm. you cannot afford, you decide not to exercise, not to even purchase. If it comes down, you purchase and you make profit. Two, the Guta, that is Ghana Union Traders Association themselves, and other importers in our country should also begin to work with the Ghanaian banks to also hedge their currencies. Okay. Elsewhere it is done. You can hedge dollar for about over six months or even one year. Mm. And you, you have to integrate that margin into your profitability analysis so that whether it goes up or down, it doesn't affect your profitability. We need to, the fact of the matter is that there are a lot of good people in this country that are not allowed to work, whether within the private sector or within various governments. People are making money out of this, especially within the private sector, because some also think this is something good for them. But they are forgetting the fact that it is impacting negatively our importation uh, 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 prices or cost. And that is actually translated or transferred onto the former consumer and it's giving us this hardship. Mm. So the fact of the matter is that, to me, three things are very important. One, okay. we should begin to develop a long-term approach. I say this, there are a lot of things used daily in Ghana here that we don't even have to import one, one unit of those things. Why do we import orange juice, banana juice, uh, apple juice, uh, pineapple juice, why? These things do not even require complex value chains. Okay. You only need land and machines with high capacity. Mm. And, and Dr. Ma, because we're running out of time, what are the other two that you think we should The other adapt? two is what I said. Government should begin in collaboration with other stakeholder bodies such as the Bank of Ghana themselves, the banking industries, finance ministry, begin to find out and work out another alternative model of hedging some of hedging. the commodities, which, yes, which put pressure on the government and Very see well. whether pros and cons will help mm. us. And then... The banking industry, in collaboration with the AGIs and the Gutes and all those importers, should also plan our market such that we will have a platform that will help us hedge our currencies 
as importers. So mm. that situations Dr. Amwa, like I'm grateful uh, for your insight in, in, in this issue. Uh, we're grateful that you could join us uh, via Zoom uh, on this issue of the city depreciation. You're watching Join News Prime with me, Ernest Mino. We have some more stories for you. Let's go to the courts this time. The Supreme Court has ordered the Asin North MP James Jachikwesin to file his defense in a case seeking to stop him from performing parliamentary duties. Now, this was after the court ruled that the MP was well aware of the case before it. The Apex Court on February 22 directed that the court processes be brought to the attention of the MP through a publication in the Daily Graphic newspaper, as well as posting the document on the wall of the MP's uh, residence. Lawyers for the MP led by Chachu Chikata informed the courts that the publication in the Daily Graphic was not, does not contain all the necessary documents needed by the team to aid in opening their defense. The court, however, took the view that the other methods used by the lawyers sufficiently brought the matter to his attention. And John Uses court correspondent Joseph Okable has wonderful reports. The MP had been accused of evading court processes. The Supreme Court in February ordered that the court process be brought to his attention through a publication in the Daily Graphic, as well as posting on the wall of his residence here in Accra at the Supreme Court premise, as well as the High Court in Cape Coast. In court on Tuesday, Chachi Kata, who represents the legislator, informed the court that its orders had not been fully complied with. He explained that as far as he was concerned, the publication that was carried out in the Daily Graphic did not have the court processes attached to it, but simply had the hearing notice informing them of the court dates today, as well as the order of the court that granted that they be served through these processes. Uh, Frank Davis, who represents Michael and Kumanifa, who filed this case against the MP, told the court that the fact that they misunderstood one leg of the processes does not mean that its orders had not been complied with and that the MP was not sufficiently aware of the case against him. Uh, the court was informed by its registrar that at uh, some time in February it received a letter from uh, Mr. Teriwaja informing it of his appointment as the lawyer for the legislator. It's now time for the latest in showbiz and beautiful Becky is here to bring us the very latest. Hello, oh, Becky. Hello to you. Good, good to see you. Say something nice about me today. It's international. But I always do. You I don't. always do. Today is special. Becky, I always do. Say it. Well, you're looking beautiful as something always. Something different about, um, you know, about my attitude. Very good one. <laughs> Well, today's International Women's Day. Yeah. And, and I know you're one of the few, you know, doing very well in the entertainment industry. Aww. And um, kudos to you. You're breaking the bias. Yes. And, and uh, you're going the extra mile. I know that. Oh, thank you. And that's, uh, you know, a few of my colleagues as well, you know, breaking the bias. And we're celebrating them right here on the. Uh, entertainment segment here. That's Edem Naite. Uh, she is host of Home Affairs. And programs manager. Up for Joy. I think that is that's, more important. Yeah, that's that's Noella. She's co-host uh, for Hit FM. That's uh, Sarah Amelie. Just we call her Saminiwa. Oh, that's, that's me. Your good that's me. That's me. That's me. Queen of showbiz. I tell you. <laughs> and that's Doreen Avio. Uh, she is a co-host for Cruise Control and, you know, many wonderful things on the Hit FM channel. That's Rosalind. Well. That's really uh, Rosalind Feli. Uh, she's host of Changes. That's Emefa Akosia Deti. Yeah, she is co-host for Prime Morning. And I see the Shore Queen of Prime. the Airwaves there. Yes, Doreen that's Andor. Doreen Andor. Uh, beautiful Doreen Andor. And that's Movi Hayford. We have, you know, beautiful uh, ladies uh, here on the channel now. Jedi uh, Doku. Uh, breaking right. uh, the bias. So definitely, that, we have the women. We have the women. We we have the. We've got the women. Got the but women. on Joy Prime today, uh, we uh, they had uh, Stephanie Benson talking about, of course, women doing uh, great things in the industry, and she spoke about uh, the music industry and what we're supposed to be doing as musicians. Yeah. I get bored easily, so I like to challenge my brain all yes. the time. So I'm doing so many things, people think I'm not focused, but I'm focused in my own way, mm -hmm. you know. I don't, some people say that, you know, why don't you sort of plug your music a bit more? But I'm not really about plugging my music so much. I just love music, so I put it out. If you want to listen, listen. Yeah. If you don't want to listen, don't listen. But you I'm don't make your money off music at all. God, no, not here. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I don't even think your stars make that much money <laughs> off music here. But on social media, it looks like they do. But because people don't actually buy um, um, 
records it anymore. Okay like Even that. in the UK, they don't. It's more about the branding and the, you know. So we, I just feel we have to very, be very realistic to the potential artists mm -hmm. coming up about what the reality of, is, of making money in music nowadays. Yeah. You know, you have to learn your art and be a good performer. That's right. how, because most of the money I, I make is from doing great performances yes. and mm -hmm. concerts and mm -hmm. whatnot, but not from sing, selling um, albums. Mm -hmm. Yes, royalties if you write your own thing, but good musical. Because mm -hmm. now everybody writes music and it's like choruses mm -hmm. you don't even understand. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so far as you they can hear the doko mi kana, the doko, doko. <laughs> Hi everyone, coming up tonight, high cost of LPG impacting on operations of marketers as consumption declines. We have a report from the Ashanti region. This I increase, we are too scarce. Like me, I do delivery, you see the cylinders, I do delivery service. I'm switching to charcoal, even the charcoal is expensive. Also coming up, cocoa pores going waste as chief in the central region orders closure of Cocoa Research Institute, a subsidiary of Cocoa Board over non-payment of royalties. It raised a um, signpost, Okoja my Agri Research. Who gave him that authority? I just don't get it. So we are appealing to the government. If government has instructed him, he should let the community know. 70 workers have been laid off. We'll bring you more. Also, as International Women's Day is marked across the world, the International Finance Corporation provides over $200 million to some six financial institutions here in Ghana for unlending to women-led businesses. We also make extra effort to improve women's access to finance. Here in Ghana, IFC has provided more than $200 million with six commercial banks to lend to micro, small and medium enterprises with particular attention to women-owned businesses. First on the lineup tonight, the price of liquefied petroleum gas LPG experienced a 5% adjustment last Monday. The adjustment followed the restoration of the price stabilization and recovery levy on fuel products. The increase in the price of LPG has resulted in the decline in the consumption rate of the commodity. Anita Sewa, you got filed this report. The way the gas prices are increased, we are too scarce. Like me, I do delivery. You see the cylinders. I do delivery service. Adamu Roja is an LPG supplier. He used to deliver 40 cylinders daily, but that has changed because the purchase of the commodity has declined. This, according to him, is affecting his business. At first, I used to deliver cylinders more than 30, 40 a day. But now, the maximum will be like 20, and the minimum will be like 5 or 10, 10 rounds and you are done for the day because the people don't have money to buy the gas. Roger says the low patronage will affect his salary and ability to take care of his dependents. They, first, they, they, they pay me according to my work. So if I don't get more customers, I don't get much money. Losing customers seriously because of the increment of the prices. Because if you buy the fellow sent you, you previously, the person can buy 40 CD, can take him, him or her two weeks or three weeks. Right now, if you buy the 40 CD, less than one and a half week or one week. Meanwhile, consumers of liquefied petroleum gas have also begun feeling the pinch of new highs on the products on the market. Myself and then my wife, we are government workers. Yeah. And then based on the analysis and then stuff that are on our plans for the month, we only realize that there have been an increment. So automatically, there will be a depreciation uh, as in what we are expected to. Yeah, so that is how we are. But we are coping. 
Yeah, we are coping. No, as I saw me, well, my, my boss said it was uh, 17. As I came, they say 21 cities. And I was doubting because I thought, because if I go there, they go, my thing say, yeah, me <laughs> boom one, I say. This uh, one kg uh, costing 21 cities, no, pay the kg, you no. Know. Uh, so me, I can't afford, so I just bought whatever I want to buy, you know, you see. Me, I'm going to be here. I'm switching to charcoal. Even the charcoal is expensive. Anita Sewa, Ajogas Report, read to you. Well, to the, uh, to the central region, rather, a story developing nearly 70 workers of the Cocoa Research Institute of Ghana, a subsidiary of Cocoa Board at Asin Rakes in the central region, have been laid off following an order by a chief for the company to halt its operations in the area. Towns of Cocoa Ports are going rotten and many more are getting rotten by the day after a chief in the area, Professor Okwajiman Dankwa Mayao Okroko, set up a tax force and ordered the closure of the facilities over non-payment of royalties. At a news conference at Asing Rakese, the chief of Asing Rakese, Nana Dankwamea, the second condemned the action of Professor Okwajiman Dankwamea Okoroko, saying he does not even have the legal right to claim the land. Richard Kujinako has more in the following report. On a cocoa board report, tons of cocoa pots are rotten and many tons of pump canals have been destroyed, leading to huge financial loss to the company. The occurrence is as a result of the tension which has erupted at a similar after a purported chief, Professor Okuji Amandamkwa Mayor Okukroku, and his tax force besieged the Cocoa Research Institute of Ghana and stopped workers from performing their activities, claiming the land belongs to him. In the event, the purported chief pulled down the cocoa board signpost and replaced it with his bearing an inscription, Okujiaman Agricultural Research Station, the farm manager of the Cocoa Research Institute, Prince Mensa, says the actions of the chief have caused a huge financial consequences to them. He indicated the chieftaincy dispute in the area has affected the institute in many negative ways and the situation needs to be addressed. And this has caused us greatly. We had cocoa that was to be broken on the Friday 21st and uh, that would have numbered close to 28,000 pots. That was all left unbroken. And that amounts to 18 bags of dried cocoa and uh, presuming to be of uh, 12,000 Ghana cities of value. And all that has come to waste. What you see on the mat was broken last Tuesday by the very team that Nana Okujiaman brought. Realizing the sort of uh, loss that he has caused us, he came around again with a team to break the cocoa to dry, or sensibly for which cause we don't know. But all in the interest of peace, we did not have any encounter with him. So the loss to us is great. You know, we have oil palm also here. It is something, uh, acres of oil palm, that has all been allowed to drop, which is due harvest. So ideally, the harvest, uh, sorry, the harm cost us is great. But because management is handling the process, engaging media, engaging the courts, engaging Cocoa Board, we have had to hold up and allow the dialogue process to sort of uh, end before operations can go on. Uh, we were doing with 66 uh, casual workers and then 16 regular workers, making 82. But in the event of such, you could imagine that even before the close of January, we had to pay everybody. And now for February 2, we would have to see what might men do. The, call, the loss is great. We cannot right away evaluate until, yes, until we do our own assessment and come up. But for cocoa or palm, we, we have a challenge. The chief of Asan Rakesi, Nana Dankwa Ameyo II, condemned the action of Professor Okuji Aman Dankwa Ameyo Okukuku and called on the security agencies to immediately arrest him for causing damage to national property. Bafo or Okuji Amai, he's not the chief. That's why the letter that he petitioned the government, the presidency, the letter was sent to me. And if you look at it, I think the press have a copy of it. And it's addressed to Nanadankwa Ameya, the second. It, not, it wasn't addressed to Professor Okuji Amadankwa Ameya Kukuruku. No, it wasn't. It was addressed to Nanadankwa Ameya. We want the government to arrest this man. One. Two. We want the government to let the man to seize him from coming to this area. 
because the project doesn't belong to him. And as you can see, when you were coming in, he has he raised a um, signpost, Okoja Mai Agri Research. Who gave him that authority? I just don't get it. So we are appealing to the government. If government has instructed him, he should let the community know. The chief indicated they will liaise with the Ghana Cocoa Board to fashion out a way of restarting work so the destruction and the losses would be halted. Reporting for Joy News, Richard Kwejenya Akon, Cape Coast. The International Finance Corporation, IFC, has provided over $200 million to some six financial institutions in the country for on lending to women-led businesses. The move is to eliminate the lack of access to finance for women-led businesses. Now, speaking at an International Women's Day forum organized by the Ghana Stock Exchange, a senior country director at IFC, Simel Hasibioglu, said IFC, which is a member of the World Bank Group, is committed to increasing funding to women-led firms up almost 50 percent of informal small and medium enterprises in the country and have little or no support as international women's day is observed across the globe the ghana stock exchange is using the forum to highlight some opportunities available for women in overcoming their challenges in business speaking at the forum a senior country director at the ifc ghana jamile hachibe yoglu hinted that the ifc which is a member of the world bank group is committed to increasing funding to women-led businesses companies such as Activa to develop insurance products customized for women to help them become more resilient to all the risks that come in their multitasking lives from home to work. We also make extra effort to improve women's access to finance. Here in Ghana, IFC has provided more than 200 million with six commercial banks to lend to micro, small and medium enterprises with particular attention to women-owned businesses. And we're certainly poised to do more. And this collaboration with GSC grows from year to year. Managing Director of the Ghana Stock Exchange, Echo Afezi, used the occasion to call on women businesses to use the bears to raise capital to expand their operations. The bond market is still doing well. It's done about 8% better than that of last year as we speak. As we discuss gender equality today for sustainable tomorrow, I'd like to encourage all women entrepreneurs to use the market to raise capital. To expand their businesses it's very important i want to see constance's business on this market in a year or two uh, constance is hiding somewhere there but she's a very prominent woman <laughs> entrepreneur i also like to advise women to invest invest in shares and bonds if your husbands and your colleagues and your partners are not investing encourage them to invest because without investing you have no future so i encourage all of you gathered here to look at how to grow your businesses by raising capital and also investing the forum dubbed ring the bell for gender equality was aimed at celebrating contribution of women to economic growth Second Deputy Governor of the Bank of Ghana, LCOIG, has encouraged women to leverage technology to break the digital bias. According to her, there are vast opportunities in the digital space women can take advantage of. This, she believes, will increase women's participation in the fourth industrial revolution, as well as increase economic participation of women. She was speaking at the International Women's Day Dialogue organized by the United Nations Capital Development Fund and the Bank of Ghana. Projecting the current trends into the future, the World Economic Forum reports or suggests that overall the, gen the global gender gap will close in some 99.5 years. And it turns out that the single most important factor to closing this gap sooner is the economic participation and opportunity gap. This is actually not doing well, like I said. It's, it's a second uh, to the bottom. And the longer it takes for us to close the economic participation and opportunity gap, the longer it takes us to achieve gender parity around the world. And in fact, if we do not close economic participation and opportunity gap early enough, the World Economic Forum projects that it will take some 257 years to close the gender gap. If we're going to be able to achieve SDG 5 on gender equality and women's empowerment, we need to leverage the power of technology. There are vast opportunities for women to advance themselves through online education and skills acquisition. 
tele access to telemedicine, increased trading in goods and services with more uh, digital payment options. So a woman in the village can sit in her bedroom and sell something um, using mobile money as a payment channel. And you're watching uh, Business News on uh, Business Prime Business here on Joy News. Uh, we will be right back with some more stories. Stay tuned. World Initiative for Soy in Human Health and the Ghana National Egg Campaign Secretariat have launched a new national egg promotion campaign, DAP Extra O. The, com the campaign is aimed at educating the Ghanaian public about the nutritive and functional benefit of eggs for persons of all age groups. Here's more. Eggs are a rich source of protein and vitamins. A large egg contains about 6 grams of protein. The launch of the Extra O campaign was planned to coincide with the 2022 International Women's Day. Here is coordinator for Ghana National Eggs Campaign Secretariat, Comfort Echampo, highlighting some benefits of egg consumption. Now, a cooked egg is 150, 150 pesos, or 120 pesos. So the person, the consumer, will just calculate and see where. Well, let me buy cocoa and its accompaniment, and I will be okay. So people are shining away from the consumption of eggs, and that is why we want to do this extraordinary campaign. We want to entice people, we want to encourage people to eat more eggs, because it's better to eat that expensive egg and stay healthy than to eat something else and go sick and the money in the end that you use for hospital treatment will be more than if you bought that egg. Project's lead for Extra O at the Little Cow Consulting Limited in DD Forge War explains the rationale behind the campaign. We launched today to coincide with International Women's Day celebrations with women partner groups like Awafa N, Awia Agri House, Webback and Genex because we saw it as a good opportunity to bring our campaign's message, Extra O Nutrition for All, to the women especially. Because of the many misconceptions that shroud air consumption, 
So we thought it best to come here today to coordinate efforts with these women groups to educate everyone present about the benefits of egg in your diets to address some of the misconceptions, we had a trained nutrition officer do that and also share educational material that speaks to the benefits of eggs. Our campaign goal is to increase egg consumption among Ghanaians, which will lead to a boost in Ghana's poultry industry. Meanwhile, National President for Women in Poultry Value Chain, Dr. Victoria Nogbe, is calling for sustainable resources by government to quickly address challenges that arise in the agri sector. Our team is on the gender equality today for sustainable tomorrow. We think that if men and women are working together, we'll have a sustainable uh, economy. So for us in the animal production sector, we're asking that uh, we want a Ghana where there will be equitable distribution of resources, where women can also get resources to do their business. Uh, we want uh, an environment where policies will, will favor women also to work. And uh, we are thinking of uh, an environment where there's no discrimination. The bird flu has negatively impacted uh, our industry. That is why I even mentioned in my speech that we are looking for a Ghana where there will be sustainable resources, even to pay compensation for farmers who fall prey to such disease outbreak. The Extra O campaign saw leaders and members of the Ghana National Eggs Campaign Secretariat and the Women in Poultry Valley Chain, Agri House Foundation, Women in Agriculture and African Women in Animal Resource Farming and Agribusiness Network come together. The campaign will run till the end of December 2022 and will include targeted training for stakeholders in the poultry value chain across the country. And we are concluding tonight's uh, bulletin in Parliament. And well, we've just, we just might have gotten a solution to Ghana's economic woes because it would have been fixed if we had a woman heading the finance ministry. That's a claim of the Kwachi West MP, Helen Intoso. The MP made this point while highlighting the industriousness of women and their role in nation building as the world celebrates International Women's Day. Listen. When women are in positions, Mr. Speaker, I dare to say that they do better than men. Mr. Speaker, I also dare to say that if the finance minister were a woman, we will not find ourselves in in this situation that we find ourselves in, I dare to say that, Mr. Speaker. Yes. Yes. Mr. Speaker, so in short, what I'm saying is that women, we can perform, we can do better at times when we are put in certain positions. So in the last NDC government, I am advocating that the defense minister should be a woman. The minister for defense should be a woman. The minister for interior should be a woman. The finance minister should be a woman. So that Ghana will move forward in the right direction. More power to the women on International Women's Day. That's uh, business, but there is more news on our website, myjoyonline.com forward slash business. You can head over there and get up to date on uh, the day's latest news stories. Coming up next, Gary Al Smith with all this. Thank you for staying with us on Joy News Prime. Gary Al Smith with the sport. And like we headlined, former IBO lightweight champion, Emmanuel Ortego, aka the Game Boy, is confident that he will beat Ryan Garcia to announce his presence on the global boxing stage. Now the two fighters go head to head in an international lightweight bout slated for the 9th of April in San Antonio in the USA. Game Boy um, is upbeat about his chance. Let's dial it back. Today, as you know, is International Women's Day. It's a global day that celebrates the social, economic, cultural, and political achievements of women. The day also marks a call to action for accelerating gender equality. And it is in this vein that the Member of Parliament for Tano North, Frida Prempe, has asked the Ghana Football Association to give female football, women's football, equal attention. How long can this country continue to spend money on the players, on our teams, and how long will they continue to disappoint Ghanaians? How are we preparing the female teams, the princesses, the black queens? Yes, we've not lost it all. In some other disciplines, we are doing well, we are doing much better. But football is becoming a problem. 
We are investing in football, with the outcome hasn't been good so far. The local players in this country are also yearning to, to also be called. They are yearning to go professional. So why don't you also use most of our local players who are equally good, so that they will play their hearts out. They're always inviting the professionals who would wa always want to take care of themselves, so that they don't hurt themselves. We should have a blend of the two. I want to appeal to the FA, to the Ministry of Youth and Sports, to also consider the call to include skillful local players and train them in the team. I believe that when we call on them, they will play their hearts out for this country. Back to men's football, and today we had Ghana Premier League action. It was top of the table stuff between Bechem United and Asante Kotoko up in Bechem. They drew goalless and um, at the Nana Giabua Park in a Ghana Premier League Week 19 clash. Now, the Hunters drew at home in a pulsating and end-to-end -end game. Both teams created good chances in the early stages of the match with Kotoko goalkeeper Dalad Ibrahim making some wonderful saves. Kotoko have 41 points at the moment and um, elsewhere in the Ghana Premier League, we know that Kotoko are, have gone eight points above second place, Adriana Stas. That is what today's result means. Now, still in the Ghana Premier League, what a season Bright AJ is having. The attacker has scored 12 goals after 18 games in the top flight, and his last goal coming in a 1 0 win over Ken Faisal on Sunday. So, what is the secret behind AJ's superb form this season? Joining us via Zoom is management member of Adriana Stars, Ata Poku. And um, you take us through what some of the secrets of his young boy are. Ata, thank you very much for your time. Uh, thanks for having me, Gary. My regards to everybody. Yeah, I see you. You are decked in the Adriana in the Oja shirt this evening. Where are you at the moment? Are you in Kumasi or in Doma? I'm in Kumasi, but we are preparing to move on Wednesday for the house game on Sunday. On Sunday, that should be a big one indeed. Now, Brighter J, for a lot of people who don't even follow the Ghana Premier League, they might remember him from, you know, that CNN goal of the week that he won a couple of years ago, and that's how he, sh he came to international prominence. What has accounted for such an outstanding season for the young man? A clean bill of health for the first time in so many years. Um, right after the season, we made him to undergo treatment in Kumasi and also rest. So those niggling injuries that have been bothering him for recent years are off. Okay, right. And is there anything that's been different about how he's being deployed in the Adriana team? The first thing. Secondly, Thunder, you have to take responsibility for the like change for us. Initially, he was playing, I can hear you, he was playing like behind the Ayam Mohammed. Uh, he is the fulcrum of the attack of the team. So if you've watched most of the goals he's caught this season, they are mostly from runs from deep, um, from balls from midfield, and then he's been scoring from those situations. And also, he's been a lot more clinical compared to previous years because he doesn't take many chances to get his goals. And then we've also given him penalty duties. He scored a penalty in Accra against us. And unfortunately, he's missed a couple of them, one against Wafa and the other in the FA Cup game. So it is a change in position and accepting responsibility for the absence of Yaya Mohamed that has pushed him up and has catapulted him to the top. Ah, that should be interesting. What is the expectation in the Adriana team as we, you know, get closer and closer to the end of the season, Atta? He has 12 goals now. If we extrapolate his goal scoring ratio, he can easily get to maybe 20, can't he? That is the target for him actually this season. We expect him to get 20 goals and in the league. And it's a target we've set for him. Away from that, we are also expecting that he'll break into the senior national team because he's someone who has seen it all on the local level, on the continental level, and also going out and then coming back into the country to continue playing for us. So both targets we genuinely believe are achievable. We believe the league is a fast stretch because of the result we got against Kotoko in Dama and the fact that we have to go to Kumasi and play them. But there is no pressure on anybody now. And we believe that's a trump card for us. Anything at all is possible if we commit to it. And with Brother J leading our attack, we genuinely believe he has what it takes to get into the Black Stars and also push us closer to contending for the league title. Right. Black Stars... 
squad is yet to be out. Do you foresee that perhaps he can, he can get it? We understand that the collapse uh, will be made public by Thursday because um, tomorrow we understand that the Black Stars Management Committee will be given the list that Otuadu and the technical team have put together. Do you, do you think that Brighton J can force his way into this squad against Nigeria? Our, channel, our channels are constantly open and we are actually expecting a call from the FA for Brighton J because on kind form, there's nobody better than him in the country in attack. And he's very qualified to play for the Black Stars because that's one area where we are struggling. So we are actually looking constantly at our emails and our phones, hoping for the information to drop so that we break it to him that he's joining the Black Stars in the <laughs> double header against Nigeria. That, that will be something. Eh? And best of luck to you and to Bright AJ. Hopefully, uh, for his sake, he can get a Black Stars call up. Thank you very much, Collins. We appreciate your time. And he will be the captain of the Black Stars because Andre is not available, of course, due to the red card. Hopefully, he can bring this form against Nigeria on the 25th and the 29th of this month. Anyway, Champions League fair now. Bayern Munich currently leading Salzburg 4-0. Robert, Robert Lewandowski scoring a hat-trick in 10 minutes. And Serge Gnabry adding the fourth. At Anfield, Liverpool are drawing 0-0 with Inter, but they still lead 2-0 on aggregate. That's Liverpool lead 2-0 on aggregate. And uh, that's the sport for now. Thank you very much for your time. we we'll do this again tomorrow, shall we? And for more news, head over to our Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Hashtag across board, Joy Sports. Cheers.